Good morning, folks. I hope you're not sick of me saying we had a special video come out last night because it's true yet again this morning. We examined the causes of the continental size tsunamis if you haven't seen it yet. But this morning, we're back to spaceweathernews.com. And the sun's not up yet in the New Valley of the Sun, but the Solar Dynamics Observatory has visibility. Another day of those patchy coronal hole signatures here, they do look to be extending up from the south. And that bright area on the south is surprisingly resilient, given the fact that our sunspots beneath those bright umbral magnetic fields decayed two days ago. The space weather story this morning is actually in the solar wind, in how weak it is. The previous stream was weak to begin with, and we've dropped lower since then. We are in an extended period, strong cosmic ray alert due to the low geomagnetic activity, where the inactivity of the sun allows more of the cosmic particles to affect the inner solar system. Highest alert is for cardiac and mental health patients, already considered at high risk, with autoimmune condition flare-ups and psychological effects being a risk for all life. Many of you got the health alert a while ago on your phone. Our app not only has real-time earthquake, solar flare, and geomagnetic storm programs, it's also the only space weather health alert system on the planet right now. Top quake of the last day hit Puerto Rico, way above average for this region, and I always monitor this region because while everyone knows about the Canary Island volcano landslide and east coast of the USA tsunami risk, a large landslide into the trench at Puerto Rico would send a great wave up the east coast much, much faster. We're off to Greece, where they said hello to winter right on time, but in a much more severe fashion than their post-holiday pre-New Year week usually sees. We're also getting reports of a northeast Indian city being pounded by hail, taking out communications infrastructure, basically bringing the region to a standstill and shiver. Moving on to our first science article of the day, waited two months for the corrected proof of this one. Nepalese earthquakes, not unlike those in Italy, Greece, and the Middle East, now have enough proof of their pre-seismic electromagnetic signals that they too now feel confident here they'll be seeing the next one coming. Folks, that is not crazy. It is legit electroquake forecasting. There are hundreds of papers on it, and you can learn all about it at quakewatch.net. Okay, folks, let's take a trip into space and back in time. This was the view half a decade ago as comet sighting spring was on its way past Mars. Satellites around the red planet took in the event, and it turns out data took a long time to analyze. It was very telling of celestial body interactions, where they were finding that even the strongest solar blast to hit the red planet during those satellites reign couldn't match the electrodynamic disruption caused by the comet coma interacting with the red planet. The variations they saw in electron content, layering, and dynamics tell a very scary story but for the fact that it happened to Mars and not Earth. In other words, comets, stay away from our planet please, even just for a close look. Up next, we had a glorious confirmation of geophysicists' next attempt to understand the Earth, using the space weather readings of induced currents to determine the baseline conductivity of the upper mantle. People don't realize that solar-induced ground currents occur in the mantle too, and that's before any run-down cold slab subductions take it directly in the highway downward. But that's why too great of a solar blast could reach the core, and why mantle heaving, which we covered in that video last night, is almost a certainty in a micronova or super flare event. The mantle is made of metals, crystal, and water vapor. It reacts to electricity. Our top story today gives us a chance to revisit my favorite galaxy other than our own. It's the Whirlpool Galaxy, M51. It is one of the more studied galaxies in space, having been the target of optical, UV, X-ray, infrared, and even radio surveys at various times. And today, one of those analyses was able to trace subtle movements of its molecular clouds, its stellar nurseries, showing them to display a completely non-random pattern of prograde spin with the galaxy, implicating that they are trying to act like many galaxies or star clusters within the larger whole. Indeed, since those molecular clouds are inside of and threaded with that large-scale galactic field structure and are electromagnetically connected to the galaxy system, that makes much more sense than even the authors recognized. A couple things here to end. Folks, our disaster prediction app is indeed a one-of-a-kind app. It's real-time, and it is also my direct alert system to you in case I see the worst of the worst going down. 
There are three days left to get the PDF of our textbook. Frankly, I would wait until summer when the third edition comes out. The second one is sold out in print. It is just the online PDF only. Professors snatched up the rest of them for their spring classes and requested that third edition, which again is a few months away. Last but not least, there are two new speakers to announce for Observing the Frontier 2020. The first is Philip Mannheim. You saw him in the Plasma Cosmology movie and in the standalone interview he did with us earlier in the year, coming from Connecticut to talk cosmology. And we are also very lucky to have the Google whistleblower, Zach Voorhees, agreeing to come for our community day, where control and corruption and the rest of the alternative topics in our realm do get a full day's coverage at our conference for the first time. We'll keep adding more information over at observatoryproject.com. And folks, yes, for the time being, we are indeed sold out for August. We do get cancellations every year. And so towards May or so, we're going to be reopening those ticket sales back up for those canceled seats. We'll let you know as that time approaches. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.